Hi guys, welcome to this Photoshop tutorial. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the very basics of compositing. Now we're not going to do anything fancy with all the shadows and everything else in there. It's going to be very, very basic. So if you're already at this level, you'll probably want to skip this one. But this is really just for people just starting to try and get into compositing and have an idea of how it works. So we're going to have our start image, which is this background image here. We've got an image of a car some dude in sunglasses and a flare. So we're going to start with the background. Now the first thing I'm going to do if you go up to your adjustment layers you do have a color lookup tool. You click on this on the top section you're looking for moonlight. This has got a bit of general darkness to the image for us to help us have a start if you will. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up these two images I'm going to use the quick selection tool on this gentleman to try and get a reasonable cut out it should be quite good because he's wearing quite a light coloured jumper so we should get a reasonable selection from this uh, there's an air on his glasses there it's not quite got uh, there's a little bit there so I'm just going to try and add that bit zoom in a little bit here And I think that'll do us. So I'm going to Control C to copy, go to our background image, Control V, and Control T. I'm just going to drag him down there. I could actually just use the move tool then. It's a force of habit, I'm afraid. And I think we'll place him somewhere about there. Now I know it looks a little bit odd because he's obviously the the color lookup isn't over him by wanting to look as if he's been lit independently of the background so it'll all become clear as we go along so we can close that one now well, I'm going to start with a quick selection tool I don't think this is going to be the most successful tool uh, simply because there's very little contrast between the car and the background so it's going to make it very very difficult but if we start with a, a very basic I'm going to press my alt key to subtract from the selection try and get that back and we've got the vast majority of it there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the Q key go to a brush tool change the foreground colour to white and I'm just going to add to that on the odd pieces where it's not quite getting it, like I said we don't need a an exact selection but we do want to get somewhere near. And if you're not sure and you can't quite see, as it is perfectly acceptable just to overpaint, press X to change your colour back and remask it in. I just want to. get those wing mirrors you'll make a lot better job of your selection than me I'm just trying to get this done quickly for the sake of a tutorial extra change colors again we'll just mask off around there a little bit more and I think that will probably do us for now so I'm going to press Q again to come out quick mask, Control C to copy, back to the image, Control V to paste, Control T to transform. And what I'm going to do, I'm probably going to bring this down in size a little bit. Something like that will do. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a levels adjustment at the top of the stack. And I'm going to bring down the darks a bit more on the mid tones. Now I'm not really looking at this gentleman here because we'll probably move him in a minute. We'll put him on his own lighting. Uh, but I'm just looking to get something. So this is why I said the selection of the car wasn't too important because it's going to be that dark. You're not really going to see too much detail. Um, but I don't want it too dark that it sheds no light. So just try and find a happy medium. 
I'm in the mask. I'm gonna make sure I'm set to to black with our brush. I'm gonna make that brush a little bit bigger. I'm gonna make a selection roughly at the bottom of the car. I'm gonna put one dab. Now I'm gonna move my brush down to this corner, press the shift key, and dab again. So we're just getting a, a cutout line. So I want it to look as if the lights are illuminating the road somewhat. One dab there. Shift key dab there gives us our line. So we know we're filling in roughly in this space here. So I'm just going to enlarge the brush a little bit. Now it's easier to actually probably paint a little bit more than what you want at this stage. And we can take it back off. I do want to kind of clip around the front of the car just a little bit there. Now I'm going to swap colours. I certainly don't want the effect on this side because this side wouldn't be lit from the car lights. Um, and we're going to take the bulk of it off around there. I'm going to leave just a little bit just on the very edges of some places on this shirt here. There's already a highlight there so it's, it's pretty good and we'll just make sure we've got a reasonable edge there. Now what we can do is this uh, this gentleman has just have a little bit of a white edge where we've cut him out. So whilst I'm selecting that layer, I'm going to come to layer, matting, remove white mat. And you see it's just cleaned some of those edges up for us. Um, the car we should be fine come off a black background, it's in a red to be dark picture so it isn't going to affect it too much. So now we've got this area in here. Let's go back to this level's adjustment to black and just go over that line the lines are a little bit too strong it's a bit too obvious but if you double click on the mask you do have the feather options in here so what we can do is we can just move this feather up till we get to a point where the lines start to soften so it looks a little bit more realistic that's just soften that line up nicely so that's that's probably okay at that uh, what I might do actually is I just might size that car down a little bit more. I'm going to hold my shift key to constrain the proportions. Let's move it across a little bit. And that's fine. So we've got our car, we've got our person, we've got our background. We've darkened it down somewhat to make it look a bit more like a nighttime feel. It's really oversaturated at the moment, but we're going to deal with that later on anyway. Uh, so we're not going to worry about that too much just yet. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at actually bringing some artificial lights in here for the car. If you're a Beck member you would have downloaded the file package with this so you will have all these images to hand. You've got to open up the flare. And you make your selection. Control C to copy. Control V to paste. Now we're going to set this to screen. Control T to transform. Again, I'm holding the shift key here just to try and keep uh, everything kind of in proportion. And we want to position this central part of the flare directly over the light. And I think that's probably about right. So, what I'm going to do, press return to accept that. Now I'm going to control J to copy it. Get the move tool. I'm going to drag that across to that side. This one seems to look more turned in than the other. It doesn't look quite right. So we'll just try flipping it and see what happens. So we're going to go into edit, transform, flip horizontal. And you see that just looks a little bit more realistic now. Obviously, we've got all this flag spreading over onto the general, which I don't really like. I don't want that at all. So on this this one we're going to add a layer mask foreground color to black brush tool I certainly don't want the effect over there let's just zoom in a little bit more and I don't want the effect on the inside there so we just carefully mask off around there and you see there's a bit of a distinct line down here as well which we want to try and get rid of a little bit. Um, what we'll probably do is go to the other flare, 
Again, put a layer mask on. And I'm going to change the opacity around to about 22%. I'm just going to see if I can feather that in just a little bit so it's more realistic. What we might even do is actually put a levels adjustment just above these flares. And what I'm going to do, I'll probably have to create two levels adjustment here. I'm going to attach this one by using the Alt key to this flare, so I don't want it to affect all these layers below. And we'll look at this one first, which is the right hand side. So what I'm going to do is drop the black ever so slightly, the mid-tones ever so slightly, and it will just take away some of that lighter edge. Now we'll move to the left hand flare, levels adjustment, and again we'll press the Alt key and we'll attach it just to this layer. I'll move the blacks in. See how much that, that, flare, that flare, most of that interference from that flare is actually gone now. And I'm reasonably happy with that. Um, so what we'll start doing, we'll just start tidying some of these layers up, otherwise you end up with a huge screen full of them. So the light ones, we'll select them, drag them to a folder. We'll call them headlights. We'll rename that one to dude. Car. Nighttime filter. call that light spill because that's our fake illumination from the headlights so now we're a little bit more organized what do we need to do next well as we said before this image is way oversaturated um, and with the type of image it is I think it will probably work in mono to be perfectly honest far far better so I'm just going to actually see how that looks like with a little bit of saturation but I think desaturate completely looks far better so I'm going to just desaturate it and I'm going to add a another levels adjustment and this is going to be a global adjustment to affect everything so I'm just going to bring down those blacks a little bit more and I think that's kind of working on the rest of the picture but not so much on our, our gentleman he's gone a bit dark um, so what we'll do the layer with the gentleman on is right near the bottom so I'm just going to drag that to the top and obviously he's not desaturated now um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to again add a saturation layer link it to the gentleman desaturate then I'm going to add a levels adjustment Again, I'm going to drag that to attach to that layer. And I'm just going to change him independently. And again, this is totally up to you, it's how you feel the image works best. Well, I'm kind of liking that. Um, that's probably enough for now. But what we'll do is we'll make sure all these layers are selected shift control alt and E will give us a new flattened layer at the top and we can control J to copy that and perhaps put this into soft light and drop the opacity down so it's just adding a little bit more contrast and there you have it, there's your first composite. Now as I said at the start, this is a very basic composition. It's just to give you the basic outlines, the basic tools for how you would work compositing something. All the finessing that comes later on around people's shadows 
and the details and the way the light reflects from one place to another all these sort of things you pick up and you learn as you go along adding de more details to the background silhouetted buildings or bridges industrial sites you know things like that are all things you would add um, you could have had a, an industrial building in the back here with some smaller lights and you could put small flares off each of the lights uh, you could have a drop shadow coming from the car we could actually do something with the sky to bring it down a little bit more we could add a noise effect to try and create the idea of rain so there was rain passing in front of the headlights there is lots of things we can do but the the more in depth you get the more complicated they get the more time consuming they get this video is only supposed to be a very basic introduction I hope that you've downloaded the files if you're a back member and you can run along the tutorial and I hope you enjoy doing it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.